Right, um, lightning talk, 10 minutes. Um, this is a weekend project, um, which I thought was interesting enough to be worth uh, talking about. Um, I needed an SVG generator in Go to actually generate S SVG files. Um, I looked at existing stuff, didn't look good. So um, I wrote run. This was the result of the um, weekend's work. Roughly 10,000 lines of Go, full implementation of the uh, SVG spec. And this is how I did it. Um, firstly, SVGs, as you probably know, they're basically XML files that uh, define vector graphics. I wanted uh, to generate these dynamically. Uh, I should work, I do collision avoidance stuff, and I want to do a little radar target system. Um, this example SVG, you see there's quite a lot of attributes and different element types. Um, this renders it to a pretty boring triangle in this particular case, but that's SVG. The, um, the course, first thing you do when you're looking for, problem, uh, looking for solutions, you look for existing stuff. Uh, there's quite a few stuff um, SVG generators out there, but most of all of them use this constructing XML with fprintf, sprintf strings, which is horrible. Um, and they have all sorts of things like this is the line that um, uh, opens the SVG tag and then it's closed in a different function. Also, this is just a complete nightmare. So I reckon I can do better. Um, so I dig out the SVG spec, uh, which is a mere multiple few thousand of pages, I think. Um, and it's pretty huge. And um, so how am I going to generate um, a Go library to do all this stuff? Um, I, as I haven't actually created my SVGs yet, I don't know which SVG elements and attributes I'm going to need. And it's generally easier if I just implement all of them, and then I don't have to think about it again. Um, so that's the approach, I think. But all, each of these... Um, there are about 20 or so different elements. Each of them have um, multiple groups of properties and attributes. Um, uh, this area, I think, is accessible stuff. So there's like hundreds of potential uh, attributes per, per element. So code generation to the rescue. This is the approach I use. Right, so I look at the specification. I look for common stuff in the across elements. I then extract structured data. I'll show you this with the YAML file. Um, that basically defines at a high level the different types that I want to create. I then use the standard library's text template library to create a template that will then generate Go code. I create a program which is specific to this, which is going to execute that template with the data from the YAML file and the format of the output, um, connect it all together with a Go generate line, and we're done, basically. It takes you this way to do a few iterations to get it all working. Um, but once you've got it working for one element, you've got it working for all. So that's the overall structure. This is what the actual stuff looks like. Um, so actually I want to go to um, VS Code for this. So this is my YAML file. Um, I've identified that there are elements of type image that have these attribute groups, which if you remember from the, um, uh, from the spec, we have a list of attribute groups here on a per element basis. Um, this is my input. Um, YAML file. My program to generate here, I have Go structs that um, I load in from the YAML file, um, standard Go stuff there. I then have a bunch of custom code that generates extra things like sometimes you need to manipulate, well, I'll rephrase that. In simple cases, you can um, generate things like exported Go names, capitalization, uh, such like yourself. So um, like there's a simple rule to it, but sometimes you need special overrides um, because the spec is not always consistent. So I have a bunch of um, custom logic for generating exported Go names, types, etc. if they're not already set. Basically, so I read in the data file, I have a few custom um, Fun attributes, sorry, a few, few custom functions that I can use in my uh, template that are um, uh, I conveniently need. I create the template, um, execute it. This is going to produce the output. And the final nice little trick is the Go, Go font is available in the Go standard library as Go slash format, uh, which is this import here. Then I try to format the output resulting code. If importantly, if I get an error um, formatting, I just fall back to the unformatted code. And that when you're debugging uh, templates, you will make mistakes in the generated Go, so the formatting fails, and you want to be able to debug that, so you need to know. And write it. So three simple things there. The template itself, 
Um, this can look pretty horrible. This is um, perhaps the easiest to show the generated Go uh, first. So this is an example um, for a circle element. Um, all of this is all of this code is generated. This is basically whatever is nine thousand lines or so. Um, all of this is generated. Um, the code that it comes from is this. So we're generating, we're arranging over elements, which comes from our, our data structure. We generate comments with like um, uh, correct A or an articles, really pretty useless comments. Um, if we have properties about the types we're generating this for, so if it's a container element, it's going to have children. Um, in the case of uh, if it's a container, then we also want an append children um, method on this. In, in special cases, there are extra properties that we want to be able to set. So in, in case of circles and ellipses, they have centers and radii, for example. That's it. So this, this Go template here, which is 150 lines, combined with the um, YAML file, which I think is about 400, yeah, together result in... Uh, this humongous, um, the you wanted Go code, have 9,260 lines of them, lines of it. Uh, it's all automatically generated. That's awesome. There's a few special cases um, that, I, that I have uh, in other, in, uh, other files, um, but they're just for the edge cases. The final result of what you get is this is, this is what Go API looks like for generating this um, uh, SVG output. There's a nice fluent inf interface here um, with a basically this kind of a kind of a builder pattern. Um, so e the new constructor returns a new SVG object which has the appropriate um, uh, methods on it that I call to set attributes. A pen children puts the stuff inside it. Um, there's a little sub language for doing SVG path. This is basically moving the, co co the cursor around. Uh, move to position 100, 100, move to line 2, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is all pretty fluent. And the result, uh, there's a little write indent um, uh, function to actually write out as HTML, uh, sorry, as XML at the end. Um, it's also designed to integrate with encoding XML in the Go standard library. Um, so you get very usable stuff. So code generation here totally saved the day. This meant that I could implement the um, full SVG spec. Um, if you want to see what the generated stuff actually looks like, this is the number of generated methods, of types and methods. Most of the care, you, you don't care, but you'll need to have the functionality to be able to do that if you want to. Um, it doesn't just work for, S in this library, it's focused on SVG, um, but I've used the same technique in other places. In the case of KML, keyhole markup language, which is um, used by Google Earth, have a similar thing. Here, I'm generating code. Uh, I generate code to create KML documents. And here, the input, instead of having a, a YAML input uh, file, I actually use the um, XSD, the X, X, XML schema um, that uh, the Google folk publish, the XXDs. Um, look, like this is pretty horrible XML. Um, I have this little tool which. Um, here, go KML, um, general generate. From this XML, I've got a little tool, XML, uh, Go XML struct, which then generates Go structs from just looking at the KML, uh, the XML document, now in this SD. And then similarly, there's a generator program um, that reads the uh, XSD, applies a, a template, and uh, re re generates in this case, several thousand lines of Go. Um, another example of using code generation is, uh, this is another project of mine, Go Geos. Geos is a library for doing ge uh, geometric operations. They think of like intersections between polygons and lines. It's used right in the geospatial community. Um, this is a C library. In this case, I want to generate Go bindings for it. Um, and here, my YAML file is basically a list of C functions um, with a list of arguments to them. And from this YAML file and a template and a generator program, as you've seen before, um, we act, uh, I then generate the full, um, the full set of bindings for this, uh, this library. And these, these 
in, uh, yeah, all of the vast majority of these methods are generated uh, from the input. Why do this? You're not just super productive. I mean, you can kind of claim that, um, look, I did uh, almost a quarter of a million dollars worth of work in uh, one weekend. Um, I don't think my boss would believe that, but um, yeah. Um, but you get real, real advantages from this. So, time. so the big thing, easy to get full coverage of your specification. Now you're working in this high level description of your, um, your spec, whether that's the XSD or the YAML you've written. Uh, it makes it so much easier to include everything. And once you include everything, you don't have to go back and do this sort of um, context switch of when you need to add a functionality. A really key thing is easy to iterate on API design. Um, so in the case of um, this XML, oh, sorry, the SVG stuff, in the final code, I'm storing all these different attributes in a slice um, uh, here. But in a previous iteration, I had one uh, struct element per, um, per potential uh, attribute value. As if, if you're doing this stuff manually, it's incredibly painful to change your approach. You literally have huge amounts of In my, Once you're using the template, of course, you only have to generate, you change the template um, itself, and then it generates everything else for you. So this allows you to iterate on your design much, much quicker. It's okay to add hacks for edge cases. Um, I have a bunch, sometimes the, the specs are not always very consistent. There's often little things where they're slightly different, and it's fine to have. If you can aim to get, you know, 90% of your code generated, it's already a massive, massive win. And finally, you can do this entirely within the, the Go standard library. Um, you've got text template for your actual template language. You've got Go format um, in the library as well. Uh, there's Go generate. Um, and um, so you can do it you know, without having to pull in any external dependencies. Um, so you end up with a very compact, easy to use system. And that's it. And that's why code generation is awesome. Thank you. <laughs>